Hoo-wee! What's going on, YouTube? It's Donnie B all day, bringing you a budgeteer today. I'm talking, this thing, while it retailed at first, when it first came out, it retailed for $45.99, which is, which is budget already, kind of, you know what I mean? The sub-$50 budget area. <laughs> and now I'm looking at a, a website called Kennesaw, K-E-N-N-E-S-A-W Cutlery, and they have this... Well, it's unavailable right now, but they had it for $19.98, and I've seen them on, like, Amazon, things like that. This is the Colombian Colombian Survival Smatchet and Field Knife Two-Piece Survival Set from United Cutlery. Uh, my man, Slingshot Warrior, he was, uh, he's a big Smatchet guy, and he's the one that got me to grab a Smatchet. And so I grabbed the first one I saw. Not knowing if it's any good or not, we're going to test it. I do have a love-hate relationship with United Cutlery stuff. Um, generally, you can buy things where the blades are going to hold up, but the materials just generally suck. There's generally something about United Cutlery that I don't like, but who knows? Maybe someday something will just change my mind. Um, so let's... Uh, Let's give this thing a once over real quick. You have a, a big nylon sheath. And when you're talking about like a smatchet style knife, it's more of like a machete. So I'm not going to bang on the, the fact that it's a nylon sheath because that's a common sheath material for a machete style knife. Um, let's see. We have a um, full tang. It's 1065 high carbon steel blades, uh, both of them. Uh, black tungsten coating will take any abuse that's thrown at it. <laughs> oh, we'll find out that. Um, the grippy black fiber filled ABS and TPR rubber handle scales are secured with attractive brass pins and featured lanyard holds. So what you have is, first of all, it's not pins. Those are like Chicago screws, right? Um, so already they lie. So, but but they try to make it sound fancy. What it is is rubber um, handle material with brass screws. All right, so you know you don't have to oversell something. You could just say rubber handle. <laughs> but um, all right, so it, it's a black fiber filled ABS. Um, and TPR rubble, uh, rubble, <laughs> rubber, <laughs> maybe rubble. Um, maybe the black fiber TPS is underneath. That's what this is. And this is the rubber. I'm guessing that that's what that is. That's that fiber filled stuff. Um, if you don't know what that means, it's plastic. That's exactly what that is. It's just a plastic. Um, so TVR rubble, rubber, <laughs> rubble. I can't say rubber. <laughs> they don't feel the same. So, the uh, TBR, uh, TPR is just rubber. Um, black fiber-filled ABS. ABS is plastic. Um, it's just plastic. Um, did I say that yet? Plastic. Uh, attractive brass pins, blah, blah, blah. Smatch it. Has a beefy 13 and 5 eighths blade and is 19 and a quarter inches overall length. The field knife has a 4 and a quarter inch blade with an overall length of nine and three eighths. I'm not ignoring you guys, I'm just reading. Um, the set comes housed in a reinforced nylon belt with heavy duty, heavy duty snap enclosures. Um, they really, really sell this thing. They make it out like, wow, you're about to get blown away. Let's get blown away right here. I do like that if you're gonna have a survival set, that you add cordage. Cordage is very important when you're talking about a survival situation. Um, it's kind of mora shaped. It, it, it looks a lot like a mora. Um, I have to say that the rubber handle, <coughs> the rubber handle is tacky but weirdly slick at the same time. It almost has like a gooey feeling. It's really hard to explain. Um, it's jimped on the rubber, um, and then the plastic 
Yeah, it's weird how they do this. They just wrap plastic and rubber. So you take plastic and rubber, put it together, and you say, well, you have one not-so-great handle material, and you have one not-so-great handle material. Put them together, and you'll have a better not-so-great handle material, I guess. But um, we will find out how sharp it is. I don't know if it's, like, hair-popping sharp. And, no, it's, it's not shave sharp, that's for sure. Um, I can just feel with my thumb right away that the field knife um, is not. Now, this is the knife that should be hair popping sharp. If this one is not, who cares? This is made to smash things like a hatchet. That's why it's a smash it. <laughs> um, but this thing should be much sharper than it is. And I mean much sharper. Um, the one thing I can say is a, is not that great is the um, even the field knife is machete blade thickness which means thin. Um, I can flex it just with my fingers alone. Who knows? Maybe it's not bad. Um, it is, what, 1065, I think they said. Um, I, I could say that the survival little dude is kind of cool. I, I like the logo. Um, but here's my, my first issue with this. They call this a survival set. Like, this is the set. This is what you need to go out in the woods and survive. Why? For the love of Pete, whoever that is, would they not put a ferro rod on here? That's one thing I don't understand. Selling a, a survival kit type set thing, it would have been, um, it just would have made more sense to, to include it. But that has nothing to do with the knife, so I'm not going to hold that against the knife. So, let's take a look at this actual smash it. It's big. It's big, and I do like that. It's a big leaf shape. It is a swedged tip. Um, which I'm kind of confused about because you can see how very, very thin this is. What is that, an eighth? Um, it is very thin. Um, and, uh, if it's already that thin, are they weird? Put a weird grease on here. It's a thick, sticky grease. Um, but it's only right there. <laughs> um, why would you need to swedge the tip? I have no idea. It's supposed to be a smash it, which means this thing is supposed to be your machete. Your cut through, you kind of want the extra thickness in the tip because going through reeds and things like that, eventually you're going to hit a harder stick. And you want as much mass here as possible when swinging that. Um, so it is confusing. I will say one thing. The ergonomics of the handle is good. It's good. It It's better than any stock K-Bar ergonomics. Um, it, it's good, but it's not great. It offers a weird pinch right here because your hand gets stuck in that little gooey rubber. Um, and it is weirdly gooey. And who knows, maybe it has something to do with this, uh, this odd splotch. And I'm not kidding. There's the grease. It stops. There's like no grease up here. It's just right there. It's like a smear. So I don't know what that's for. Um, but there is a little bit on the handle. That could have something to do with the gooey. But no, I think the gooey is really just the handle. Um, but yeah, so I don't understand why you would swedge a really thin piece made for brush cutting. You, it's just unnecessary. I, I, maybe they do it for looks. Maybe they do it for, you know what I mean? Just, oh yeah, look, it's swedge. So they could just add a little something to the resume of the knife, giving it a uh, something else to call. Um, I don't know. It is... Uh, it is a true, not I mean, not true full tang, but a, uh, a a full hidden tang, which means just because you can't see the tang doesn't mean it doesn't go all the way because it actually does come out. Um, so there's that, at least as a full tang. The problem is the, the tang is, what, a half inch all the way through. So you are talking a very, very thin tang for such a wide blade. Is it going to matter? Who knows? It might not. And especially... Because of what it's made for, it's made for brush, not chopping trees, um, then it, it could survive. However, if you're going to talk about a survival blade, this little tiny guy obviously is not made for cutting trees. And in a survival situation, you're going to need to process wood. So I don't understand that. Now it does have, well, okay, right there, the steel designation. Um, and that gives you a little bit of information on that. So... Let's uh, let's take them to the outdoors and smash with the smash it. Come on. All right, so let's get some stump play here. All right. 
normally I don't even bring out the sheath, but because it's just two knives, I figured why not. So I'm going to do a drop test with this guy, and I'll do one from that. Now each of them have to be four feet from tip to stump, so that one I'm really going to have to stretch with. But let's see, 1065, high carbon steel, UC3180 China. All right, so let's, uh, let's give that a test, and I will see if the cordage is going to interfere. Oh, did you hear that rattle? That means the, the scales are not on there very, very well. You can hear that. You can hear the blade rattling inside the scales. There we go. I think the um, I think it's not badly balanced, but the um, I had to work around all that cordage, which I'm not complaining about because cordage is good. Cordage is good. All right, so let's take the big guy. Same thing, now I really need to stretch. This should have no problems. On the balance, falling dead straight. The, uh, the nice leaf-shaped belly right here, definitely gonna overweigh the, uh, the, the light handle material. All right, let's see. Let us see. Let's try a straight push cut. <laughs> All right, I didn't cut any of the fibers, not not a single one. You could see the dent, I pushed very, very hard. I could not push cut with the survival knife. Ah, uh, it's terrible. <laughs> All right, hey, I actually got some fibers on that one. I got a couple. You could see the difference in color right there. Um, so as far as how sharp they come, they don't. So let's see if we can do a saw cut. Oh my God, it's like, I can't even saw cut through. It started just spreading it. So this thing comes very dull. Um, when you're talking about selling, maybe that's why they, they stopped doing them, I think. Um, because you're talking about a survival kit situation with a knife that can't cut rope, <laughs> you're in some survival trouble. Come on, baby. Come on, something, something's got to cut. Well, they got like a lot of it, but not all of it. All right, so do they come sharp? No, they do not. Um, United Cutlery, man, just love-hate relationship with these guys. All right, so let's, uh, let's get something. We'll start with the little guy, and we're going to baton with it, but I'll take pieces that are already cut instead of cutting a whole log because, A, I don't trust it, and B... It's a little blade. It should be able to at least, I mean, it should be able to handle a log, but we're not gonna, we're not gonna worry about all that. We're not gonna worry about all that. Ugh, I forgot it's dull. All right, so obviously splitting kindling, it's gonna work. I don't wanna go too crazy, so I'm gonna use a short log with this one because of the skinny tang. I just don't know how much I can trust it. We'll check. Ugh. Okay, I gotta get some. All right, so I was I was thinking that this rubber was gonna really suck in that vibration. It does not. I, oh man, I can feel that in my hands. Ugh, here we go. Here we go. So ugh, ugh, that got in there pretty good. I'll tell you that thin stock really offers a lot of bite. I'll give it that. Oh man, the vibration in the hands is just killer. That is not a very good feeling. All right, let's split it. There we go. Not so bad there. Let's do that again. There we go. Oh my gosh. It's definitely in there. All right, so. So let's take this guy right here and we'll do a uh, we'll do a different kind of split. We're just gonna hammer on the end. That's one good thing about the exposed tang is it gives you something to hammer on without ruining your rubber and plastic. There we go. There we go, yo. People that don't like to beat on their knives. 
there's always a different way to uh, to split a piece of wood more gently on your edge. If you have a soft edge, um, you do a soft split. So, all right, so that will work. Um, it will uh, it will split the wood, no problem. Let's see, let's see if we can't. There we go. That takes care of that. And just like that, that takes care of that. So while it's dull, um, at least you can do things like process. And that's, that's one of the important things when you're talking about a knife. All right, so let's see. I told you it was kind of Mora-like. It looked like a Mora, but it is not sharp like a Mora. And I am no big Mora fan. Just, you know, they work great. Just not a big fan of Moras. So when I say this thing is no Mora, I'm saying something. But look at that. That is positive. Let's do some pulls. See what we can't get for some tighties. There we go. So if you really, really work this angle, you can get some nice tight curls here. And right there, you got a good way to make some fire. All right, so let's go. Make some hair poppers. And right there. Very good. So um, as far as wood processing, um, it can definitely, definitely handle that. I'm going to leave those on there and burn them later. Let's, uh, let's take this down to a tip. It's very, very light. So while it's chopping this very easy to cut stuff, um, it's very, very light. So the chop is going to be extremely weak. The good news for that is this is what you have this thing for. You don't need to chop with this. But you lose this and you need to do this, you gotta know if it works. All right, so we got down to there. And it's funny, it, as dull as it is, there's certain tasks. I mean, sure, it can't cut rope for squat, but um, handling the wood carving is kinda easy. It's kinda easy and I'm not gonna complain about that. So if you need your spears, Oh, man, if you need spears or a, look at that, like a, like a fishing spear or you're talking about tent spikes or something to hang a coat on or a pit spike or arrows or anything that you might use a, uh, a, a sharpened stick for, it'll definitely get that job done. I think once I sharpen this, it won't be so bad. Um, let's do a couple downward stabs and we're going to see how this this tip holds out. We didn't do any hard downward throws. We'll do that. Actually, we'll do that first. Hard downward throws. Make sure these are going to stay on and make sure the tip is solid. Solid as a rock. Oh, schnitzkies. All right. So that was a major fail and it hit the log. I don't even know how that failed. I don't know where Ralph go. Oh, I see him. I see him. All right, man. The bite was not impressive on that throw. I don't know if it may be just the throw. Oh my goodness. This thing is a rattler. Okay, so, yeah, so uh, I'm not really a big fan of this. I have a thousand other knives that'll do the same job and do other jobs much better. So let's do hard downwards. It's funny that the bite on this be being so narrow, you'd expect it to be more, but I don't know why I, I'm putting good hammering down and I'm getting about an inch that's it um, and I'm hammering it down let's, I want to do some Nah, I don't want to do some I was gonna say let's do some prying but it's thin and my job isn't to come out here and break the knife on purpose it's to see what it can do and handle not to see what it can't handle so um so let's do a couple hard downward throws with the big guy Boing. All right, that one has, it's got a lot better bite, but it's because it's heavier. 
and I'm throwing it pretty good. Do a couple hard downward stabs with this one. The handle on this one is really well done in the reverse grip too. I have to say that this right here, as far as ergonomically, um, it's not bad at all. Not bad at all. Ugh. Let's see, the tip did not get any bending or anything like that. This one did not suffer any bending in the tip. Um, it's funny, the black coating is starting to come off at the tip um, and right here. Um, and you remember how they did all that smack talk about how it's got this awesome black coating? Well, the black coating is awesome if you don't use the knife. Um, as soon as you use the knife, though, it's just like a black paint. <laughs> uh, let's see. It's holding up a little bit better on this one. Uh, a little bit. It's coming off at the. It's coming off of the tip. Expected. Expected to come off of the tip when you're doing things like this. Um, black coatings always just start to run out. All right. So that's what we have so far. Let's um actually. Let's do this. Let's see. Let's see if you can't find your little guy. If you lose the small one, which if you're going to lose one of them, it's most likely going to be that one. Um, can you feather? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, I don't know. Trying to find things to really like about it. And um, I think I will definitely like the actual smash it better than the little survival knife. That little survival knife would not be a pack knife for me. Um, even though I can get it to work doing stuff like this, um, it's just not very good. This one is weird. Doing targeted hits like this, it tends to find itself wavering and going off target. And that's not user error because I do this all the time and every knife goes the same. Um, but it is it is weird. It, it's harder on a short stroke to keep this thing in a certain line. I don't know if it's because of the ergonomics or because of just the, uh, the weight distribution. I have no idea, but it is kind of weird. Kind of weird. All right, let's go chop something else. All right, so being a machete style knife, walking through brush is a must. So things like this are going to be your your main your mainstay. Trying to get through branches and uh, and just clear a path. Um, this knife on things like that is good. Let's see here. Oh, I thought that was going to be better. Thought that was going to be better. There we go. All right, it's doing like a, uh, it, it's doing like a cut and break at the same time, which is kind of weird. I, I for for a blade this size, I was really thinking that it was going to be more like that on the thicker pieces, but it wasn't. It just wasn't. Let's see. Let's see. That didn't cut. It just pulled right out of my hand. Gave it a nice slice. But that was it. Now, a lot of these knives that I test, just holding it and pulling a downward hit, it's going to go all the way through. This one did not. Let's chop, uh, you know what, let's chop something even fatter. Got the little guy right here. All right, let's chop something even fatter. Hey, 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 Bigsby up here. Roscoe, good boy. That's weird. It's weird for me to say that. All right. Wrong one's running away this time. All right, let's get some, let's get some chopping on some thicker pieces, and let's see. I want to make it so you guys can see it. So I will pull a piece over here to stick it on. All right, here we go. This is where I think it's going to shine, actually. Actually, this is where I think it's going to shine. All right, and it is getting incredible bite on the chop. Um, so I have to say, being as thinly profiled as it is, um, like me, so thinly profiled, sexy, um, it, uh, it, it's going right through the softer woods. How it will be on hardwood, different story. But going through like pines, firs, things like that, this is going to tear right through stuff. It's going to just tear right through it. Ugh, man, it's got some some really good bite on the chop it's so funny how it was having trouble just searing through the small stuff but the big stuff it just tackles Ugh. yeah all right so let's see here there we go 
So now what I'm gonna do is, we see how it's able to cut through. What I wanna do is just hammer, just hammer on some, on some wood here. Hopefully it'll be in the shot. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I get stuck in it. There we go. So here's a problem. The bite is so good that if you're out in the woods and you're swinging on to do a chop and you get stuck in it, you're going to need to have a piece of wood there to help get it out because you don't want to torque it too much sideways because you can see how much flex I'm getting there. You don't want to break it. All right, so... It, it, it's just it's really just sticking in the wood more than it's cutting the wood and uh, that would just be a pain in the nuts and I think it's because of the thin profile so I mean can you chop with it yeah um, you could chop especially some of the softer woods um, but it does get stuck in how will it perform against a harder wood that's what we need to find out because who knows? Maybe it'll just chip up on a harder wood. I don't know. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna test that real quick. All right. Let's see what we got here. At least I'm able to pull it out of this one. You yeah. So I am finding that here, but I have gigantic hands, is, is like really putting a pinch on that pinky. But of course, let me see. Let's, uh, let's do this, let's try this with my fingers pushed more together. Yeah, that's a little better. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. The old scabaroony backhand. So, it's, it's hot. Um, I have no edge damage. I have no edge <laughs> sharpness, but I have no edge damage, um, which is good. Um, so, overall, we're looking at two pieces of kind of subpar um, survival gear as far as blades are concerned. Um, are these ones I would recommend? Not really. Not really, if I was gonna be honest with you. I mean, there's so many better choices. Um, if you can find it for 20 bucks, is it worth 20 bucks? This one alone is worth 20 bucks. This is just a little crappy bonus. Sharpened, this might be pretty good. I'm not gonna lie. If um, if I put a wicked edge on this, it's not gonna be a bad knife, right? It's just, it's just not gonna be bad. It's just not great. But, um, I mean, you can see that they do have a value as far as survival um man but that value can only go so far if it's not sharp but the good thing is it'll be an easy to sharpen blade so um i think putting an edge on it is going to make up for a lot of the the kaka roscoe in the yard man that dog he finally does something good and then he's like eh <laughs> I'm over being good. All right, so let's uh, let's back up a little bit. Whoa. <laughs> Maybe I need to back up a little bit more. <laughs> Those weren't good, Roscoe. There you go. All right, let's try that again. That's one. And. Oh. Man, surprised I didn't break that one in half. And I said, there we go. First try. Eh. All right, so, uh, you know, it's just not a knife if I can't throw it. It's not a knife if I can't throw it. 
I love throwing knives. All right, so so that's it. Um, do I recommend them? No, no. Do I recommend them for twenty bucks? Yes. Um, for if you can find them somewhere like on Amazon and they're twenty bucks, and you're just looking for something that you can put in a pack or, or strap to your gear or whatever and take out in the woods for just in case measures um for 20 bucks i mean you really it's it, it's kind of hard to beat that um so price point it's worth it um otherwise i'd say stay away but uh just another typical day with united cutlery finding ways to go okay that's kind of cool and then disappointing you at the same time so that's it for that one that is the Colombian survival two-piece kit oh wow what a what a day so um not that great but not too shabby I guess so that's it for that one I am Donnie B all day till next knife